Well, hello friends, and welcome to Ask Zach. Today we are going to take a look at the Brown Box by Amp RX. And yes, I know this product has been out for seven years, and I even reviewed the product uh, when it was first released. And uh, there's a, a funny story on how I didn't end up with one and how I ended up with something else, this device over here. And uh, I'm also gonna tell the story of how I first learned about the whole vintage amp and lower voltage thing 20 years ago from Brad Paisley. Gonna talk about who's gonna benefit the most from, uh, from this unit and, and, and why you should potentially get one if you have, you know, especially if you have old amps or even why you might wanna think about getting one even with a current amp. So, all right. We're gonna dive in, but first a quick pause for the cause. So uh, while you're thinking about it, if you haven't subscribed already, please uh, do that. Also, please hit the uh, the thumbs up, the like button, appreciate that. Uh, and if you've already done those things, I appreciate you supporting the channel. There's multiple ways. There's merch that you can see below or at my website, askzack.com. Also, uh, there's Patreon, which is a wonderful way to support me and also get exclusive content. So uh, you ought to check that out. Also, there's good old tip jar information uh, down in the description if you uh, want to do it that way. All right, let's dive in. So I guess the best place to start is how I first learned about the whole vintage amp needing, you know, lower vintage tube amp needing lower voltage. So 20 years ago, which I can't believe it's been 20 years, uh, I went to work for Brad Paisley. I was his first full-time guitar tech. Before that, I think he'd had a... a you know, bass player or bus driver, different different guys would kind of help out with setting stuff up and maybe even changing strings. But I was his first full-time guitar tech. It was right after he'd had a number one with uh, the fishing song, I'm gonna miss her. So of course the first things I did with him were live and he was using Dr. Z amps. And there was no, you know, at that point there was no big concern about voltage levels, uh, probably in hindsight, uh, we probably should have been concerned about that, uh, going from venue to venue and sometimes going on generators. But uh, we uh, we started cutting what became uh, Mud on the Tires, which uh, was a, a great album and one I'm proud to have been involved with. And Brad told me to bring his uh, vintage 1962 top boost red covering AC30. So on the road, we were using the Dr. Z amps, and then he said I needed to get this Vox amp, and I needed to get the Variac with it. And I knew what a Variac was. I don't even know if I'd really seen one before, but of course I'd read about them in uh, probably in guitar you know, interviews with Eddie Van Halen. I'd heard about the use of a Variac. Well, he said... Uh, he said, to make sure you have the Variac and you're going to plug it into that. I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I don't know how that works. I don't know, you know how to use that. And he said, just, just bring it to the studio and I'll show you how to use it. So sure enough, the next day I show up at the studio. I have his red AC30, you know, and, and there's this tray. It's like the, uh, it's like the, the, the panel off of a three or four space rack case. So it's just kind of the lid and then it is bolted a Variac, and then there's a, a four-spot AC outlet, and then there's a voltmeter that's hardwired all together, and then there's this green extension cord that's hardwired into the whole thing. All right, so he gets it, he plugs it in, and immediately the voltmeter comes on, and you see what the voltage is. Um, well, actually, yeah. I think you see you see what it is and he starts as you move the variac it changes the number and so he he pulled it down to 100 volts he plugged in the old ac30 and turned it on and then he slowly you know kind of wound it up to about 110 112 and he said that's the sweet spot of the amp he said 120 or more comes out of the wall and so by running this old AC30 at somewhere in that 110 to 112 range, the amp really sounds its best. And also it, uh, you know, it just preserves the amp, you know, it helps the amp last longer because it's really not designed for, for 120. And, you know, of course they do have a voltage selector where you could put it up to 220 or whatever, but it, that, that's not going to work. So 
I had never heard of that before in my life. And I even asked him, where did you learn about this? And he said, well, I had an amp tech named Kai Kennedy. And Kai Kennedy was kind of like the, uh, the, the amp guru of, of the 90s and early 2000s here in Nashville. And so he modified a bunch of basement heads and things like that, would make them sound a little more like Marshalls. And, uh, and he was the, uh, the kind of the amp tech at uh, Grun Guitars and such. A very respected guy and still very respected but he was the one that had told Brad that he needed to run that AC at the AC 30 at lower voltages for it to sound appropriate. And sure enough, when you ran it at higher voltages, it just kind of sounded a little more, more kind of overly intense and, and strident and not in a, and it wasn't good. And it just sounded a lot sweeter down at the, uh, at the 110 level. So fast forward many years uh, to uh, 2015, and I'm writing for Vintage Guitar Magazine, and I own some vintage amps at this point, and I get contacted by uh, Pat Garetti, and he, uh, through Vintage Guitar Magazine, and he's wanting me to review this product, and he starts describing it, and I immediately thought, this is like the Variac and voltmeter rig that we had that's just been simplified and kind of, you know, made a lot more sleek and user friendly. And so sure enough, so they sent it to me and I tested it out on old, you know, my old Fender amps and then uh, some old Vox amps and, and some old Marshalls. And sure enough, on all of them, it made a really noticeable difference in the sound. And of course, also it's, helping the tubes to last longer and also the components in the amp are not getting all over voltaged because you know if you look at this uh you know if you look at my amp schematic t-shirt and you have to think about every stage getting more voltage than it's supposed to get so i uh, reviewed it in print back in 2015 and i really liked it and so then i asked pat i said uh i'd like to to buy the unit now here I'll, I'll just give a brief plug for Vintage Guitar Magazine, who I no longer write for, but uh, just the integrity of the magazine. And that's that anything that you reviewed, you could not keep for free, that you had to pay for it. And so that helped be uh, you know, a level of an integrity of, of, of journalism. So I really appreciated that about, about them. And uh, so I reached out to Pat wanting to buy the unit and he said, I really don't have enough of them to, uh, to sell you one, and I've already promised this uh, for J.D. Simo to check out. Well, you know, J.D.'s a, a very close friend of mine, so it was kind of hard to feel bad about it. So I ended up hooking up with J.D. Simo, took him, you know, the, uh, the brown box that I had reviewed for the magazine, and he ended up uh, using that, I mean, he still uses the unit to this day. I think he's bought a, a second one at this point. But... Uh, in the meantime, I had a conversation with R.G. Keene, who is the engineer at True Tone, and also was kind of, in a way, one of the godfathers of the whole boutique pedal explosion. And I had told him about the unit, and he said, well, I could build you something you know, that's, that's kind of like that. It's not as sophisticated, but uh, I could just build that for you and, and send it to you, because I was kind of complaining about the fact that he didn't have these in stock. Well, this is what he built. So what this does, it has no control ability, but what it does is it automatically takes the voltage down five volts, which is pretty good. At least it kind of gets it in a better range. And so this is what I've used for many years. I just kind of just continued to use this. Well, what happened was in the last you know, couple of years, of course I got this Vox amp and also have a, a 59 Harvard and those amps are a lot more sensitive to voltage level than my vintage deluxe reverb. I mean, it's sensitive too, but these are more so. And so I was out on the road with this, you know, rehoused, this is a rehoused 1964 AC-10. I was playing shows and even using this box, I would get to where I was playing different venues and the amp would sound very different, especially if I was playing in a big city versus maybe a rural area. And I was just amazed at how different the amp could sound, uh, even you know, close miking it and I was kind of in shock. And then I, I realized 
that the voltage you know can vary a lot and here i have this device that yes it's dropping it some but i have no real control and so finally i decided so i reached out to pat and uh and pat said i just sold the company so he actually there are new owners that are here local in nashville that own the company now and they are very nice they uh they uh you know sold me this one and uh he uh you know got me hooked up with them and I met up with them at the Waffle House and uh, in Brentwood, Tennessee and, uh, and and we met up and I and I got my brown box and it was just really nice to have the controllability so that way you can get the consistency and you can drop the voltage because many times you need to drop the voltage more than 5 volts because what can happen is is that you can be like downtown nashville or you know certain rural areas it just depends where the wall voltage can be as high as like 125 or 126 and that's way too high for these these old amps they just don't sound right they just they don't respond right um and it's it's disappointing so by having this you know i i have you know a readout of what you know the voltage is before i start dropping it down and then I can really control it, find the sweet spot, and then that's reproducible. So every place I go, I can say, okay, it really sounds its best, you know, at 111, 112. And, you know, and then, you know, which as nice as this box was that RG Keen, you know, built for me at no cost, which thank you, RG. Uh, it just, it didn't have the, uh, you know, adjustability, the controllability factor. So... This, you know, of course, you have uh, a bypass mode so that you can, you know, of course, hear what it sounds like at full voltage. So let's just, right now I have it set at 111. And if I set it to bypass, you can see that my wall voltage is 123. And, uh, and so you have this first knob that you're kind of able to s set it. And then, it, then you have another level of controllability. So you kind of set this kind of near what your uh, voltage level is, which I have it set to, at 124 because it's at 123. And then you can go from bypass to you have, you know, 3%, which it takes it down to 115. You can take down to 4%, which takes it down to 114. And then you can get at uh, you know, 6% where you get down to 111, which is really nice for this amp. So some of you might be saying, well, why can't I just get a Variac and a, and a voltmeter? And you absolutely can. You can do that. The problem with that is that it's not as sleek. It's not as user friendly. And there's a level of danger with it because with a Variac, unless it has a, a, a stop you know, governor on it, you could actually over voltage the amp and you could uh, damage it. Also, you can damage an amp by having the voltage too low, uh, it can hurt the cathodes. So this is kind of a, a sleeker. Yes, it is more expensive, but you have to think about the fact that Variacs are made, or at least were made in the, in the millions. You know, there were millions of these things made because they're used in all sorts of different, you know, fields of, of, uh, of industry. Uh, also, you know, voltmeters are used for all, you know, they're sold like crazy to electricians and all sorts of other people. So then you have this box, which is specifically made for tube amps used by, you know, guitars and guitars and bass players and such. And so you don't have the economy of scale where, you know, you're able to have that. So, so between that and the fact that it's kind of a niche product, yes, it isn't, uh, it isn't as cheap as getting a Variac and a voltmeter. But again, the Variac and voltmeter kind of do have a downside with the fact that you can damage the amp and it's just not as, as handy. So if you want to do that, that's great. All right, so here are what I would say are the benefits. One, you have the, the sound uh, benefit because when you get the amp, in uh, you know like like this amp really likes you know this kind of 111 range that's what i like for it uh, you know it just it sounds better like a, a tweed amp like my 59 harvard i kind of like it at like 113 114 it really you know kind of sounds its best same with the, the the deluxe reverb you have that uh but also the tubes are benefiting because and the components in the amp are benefiting because they're not all being over voltaged and so when your tubes are being over voltaged they wear out faster so 
it kind of helps preserve your amp and preserve your tubes. And of course, tubes are still high, so it helps them last longer. The biggest you know, benefit is for vintage amp users. Those are the ones that are gonna get the most benefit from it. If you have a new tube amp, it's designed to go off current wall voltages. Now, the advantage for someone, you know, why someone would wanna get one of these would be purely if you wanted to have consistency of voltage. So let's say you have a new tube amp and you really like what it sounds straight up at 120, well then you could, you could use it for that. Of course, you might be able to, there might be other uh, simpler, uh, you know, devices that you could use for that. But that would be, you know, what a new amp user. But for a vintage amp user, this is, a, a, you know, I hate to say the word necessity, but it's something that, that really has a, a lot of benefits. And I would be, you know, you'd be amazed at how many of the, the people that I've interviewed for the True Tone Lounge, how many of those guys had them. And, uh, and, and plugged them in like Kenny Vaughn, JD Simo, on and on. These guys have, have had them. And uh, yeah, I'm glad to finally have one and use it. I'm going to let you hear real quick. And, and again, you know, I realize this is YouTube and there's, you know, compression and all sorts of other things going on. But I'm just going to let you hear the bypass mode. I'll play a little bit and then I'm going to switch it, you know, down. So you're going to hear it at 123 and then you're going to hear it at 111. So let's do 123 first. Okay, so the unit's in bypass mode, 123 volts. So I'm just gonna play some. Okay, now we're down at 111, the unit's on. So, I know subtleties can sometimes be lost on YouTube, but there is a, 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 a it's a little sweeter, it's also a little less strident, and it's smoother. And again, I'm just playing straight into the amp. You know, there's, you know, there's no, I've got no verb or delay or compression or anything going. So we're just going telly straight into this uh, AC-10, so... All right, guys. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode, and uh, and especially if you're a, a, a vintage amp user, you'll uh, check out the uh, the Amp RX uh, Brown Box. I'm uh, glad I, I finally, after seven years, finally picked one up. All right. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.